morning, everybody. Good news, my words will be few. Um, so I am Greg Perdue, the Tri-Cities Market President for First Horizon. Uh, it is an honor to be with you all here today. I appreciate all six United Way agent, or agencies, uh, not agencies, but uh, organizations for being with us. Um, I do think that, as Sarah has said, the nonprofit world has a unique opportunity to lead the way in regionalism where all of our municipalities and our entities have vested interest in the individual communities in which we live and serve. There's something to be said for the nonprofit world's ability to reach across, because the problems we're solving obviously don't stop at county lines. And so it's a wonderful picture of what we can do when we come together. And so thank you all for being here today. Um, I work, I just celebrated my 25th anniversary with First Horizon. Uh, when I got there, United Way was baked into the way that the company did business. It's always been that way. We just celebrated our 60th anniversary as a company. So I grew up professionally in a world and didn't know any other world than that you support United Way. And then in my home, I grew up in a home that supported United Way. My dad was, a, was a, uh, an ardent United Way supporter. And so whether I've been at home or at work, all I've known is to support United Way and to, uh, to accept the responsibility and the burden that comes with to those who have been given much as expected. And so I appreciate all of you here today. Uh, we're here to solve some big problems, but together we're going to be able to do it. So uh, we welcome you to the event, and it's an honor to be with you. Thanks very much. I'm Andrew McKeon. I am the president of Carter County Bank, uh, which is uh, the Carter County Division of Bank of Tennessee. I'm over our Mountain Community Bank, our division up in North Carolina, and over the Unicoi Market as well. Uh, I have been a bank board chair for the United Way of East Tennessee Highlands. I've been involved in the United Way for about 20 years. Um, much like uh, Greg said, I was uh, blessed to be raised by parents who were to or who instilled in me the value that you know you don't get many bigger opportunities on a daily basis than to provide a positive outcome for people. Uh, and so that, that's why I got involved in the United Way about 20 years ago, and that's why I was blessed uh, by Leslie to be given the opportunity two years ago to become president and uh, board chair of uh, the, the Tennessee Highlands United Way. Um, this year. Through the efforts of Leslie and her wonderful staff, we were able to partner with 23 organizations and uh, make an impact on 65,000 people and uh, bring them from surviving to thriving. Uh, this year, we have set our goal at a million dollars, and with your help, we will be able to get there, and we will be able to positively impact 75,000 people. So thank you for your time. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for providing uh, resources to make our communities a better place. for the campaign chair here in Greater Kingsport, Tennessee. I am Ramona Jackson. I am the general manager at Medivine Marriott, filling in for the beautiful Rebecca Beck today. Did you all know that Kingsport will be celebrating 90 years? was forged, first incorporated. So this year our theme is going to be looking back and leaning forward. I'm proud to say that the Greater Kingsport United Way supports over 25 different agencies and 30 programs. In addition to much of the work that the United Way does, hey, for everyone that is around our region, and what a proud day it is with everybody here together. Our agency supports uh, Grade, for level grade reading, homelessness, and many, many more initiatives that are so important to our area. This year, folks, get out your pocketbook. Our campaign goal is $2.8 million. I want it to be three. I mean, it's just 200000 So you might as well just say $3 million. But I, it is my privilege to serve with the Greater Kingsport United Way board and um, look forward to your support. So thank you so much. My name is Monica Sisbani and I am the chairperson for Hawkins County United Way. This is kind of a surprise to me so I really wasn't prepared because Teresa Buttry <laughs> had invited me to the event here uh, unbeknownst to me that I was going to stand up. <laughs> so good thing I work in radio because it kind of comes natural but uh, I'm going to behind the mic Like I said, my name is Monica Sisbani. I'm the chairperson for Hawkins County United Way. 
Hawkins County, for those of you who don't know, is a community that is very rich in tradition and history. Actually, we have the second oldest city in Tennessee, that would be Rogersville, Tennessee. And we have the safest city to live in in Tennessee, that would be Church Hill. I personally work for WRGS Radio, which is actually celebrating this year 70 years on air. I host one of the largest and uh, longest running radio shows called Swap Shop, and which has um, gained national attention, uh, being that we had two seasons on Netflix as a reality show. So I'm grateful to be part of, of um, what we call the glue to Hawkins County. The radio station has always been like that. If you all remember the old, like, Petticoat Junction and those old shows, some of you were too young, uh, you know, we'd get a call, hey, is uh, school closed? Or, hey, do you have so-and-so's number? And I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm so I'm thankful, though, for being able to be part of such an amazing community. And I'm also very honored to be um, chairing Hawkins County United Way this year. Um, through my community involvement and my connections in Hopkins County, which I've obtained through the years, I hope to be able to help and reach the goal that Hopkins County has set for $150,000 this year. I know that doesn't sound like a lot compared to the rest of y'all's goal, but just remember, Hopkins County is small, but we're mighty. My name is David Erickson. I am the board chair at Unicoi County, uh, the metropolis, as we call it. <laughs> so so I, honestly, I didn't even know what I was going to say. I didn't prepare for this very well. Leslie, I do appreciate the opportunity. This is a wonderful, a wonderful venue. This is unlike any farm that I grew up on. I grew up on the hand cutting tobacco in Middle Tennessee. But this is not like that type of a farm. Honestly, I was just trying to survive as a 14, 15, 16 year old kid hauling hay and cutting tobacco. Um, those were not fun times, but they gave me an appreciation for hard work. Uh, they helped me start a business in 2006. Uh, they helped me uh, become a part of something a little bit bigger, United Way in Illinois County. Um, and since then, we've, we've raised a considerable amount of money. We have yet to kick off our campaign, uh, but when we do, we're going to set a goal very uh, similar to the goal in the past, which will be around $120,000. We're very consistent with that goal. We set it because we want to meet it. We always like to say we want to raise as much money as we can because we want to give out as much money as we can. Something that's unique about our board, our board is 100% volunteer, uh, and we will raise as much as we can. We will give out as much as we can. And uh, at the end of the day, we're going to help about 20 nonprofits in our community. And one more unique thing about our, uh, our help in Unicoi County, every entity, every nonprofit that we help touches Unicoi County in some way. So whether it's an infant, a disabled child, uh, whether we're putting shoes and clothes on needy kids' feet and backs, a backpack program at the school, whether we're helping the elderly, senior citizen, when we're doing books at the library, it all goes to a great cause. And I couldn't be more proud to be part of uh, a, a program and uh, a united way that helps in such a meaningful way. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks to you guys. Thanks for being a part of something that's bigger than what we want. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Shelly Brown, and I'm with United Southeast Federal Credit Union, President and CEO. And I'm just honored to be here today. But one thing I would like to start off by saying is, Dr. Tudor, shout out to you. You're not supposed to be here. That's why I'm speaking. <laughs> And so from a vaccine, 
I want to just say a few words from the survival aspect of this event today. Growing up, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well as you did, David. Surviving was what I did. Surviving. Have you ever had your electricity turned off? Have you ever had your no food on the table? Have you ever had to go to an in-laws to sleep because something happened during the middle of the night and you didn't have a place to go? I grew up like that. I was blessed to have an amazing grandmother, an amazing mother, and people that surrounded me that loved me and did make sure that I had food and did make sure that I had a clean place to take a shower and all the things that helped me to be here today. And so I just want to say one verse before I was thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to be here today and to speak and for the people that surround me day by day that help make what we're all doing collectively a reality. So thank you very much. That's why we do it, right? Because somebody needs something and we're in charge of that right now. So let's do it. Like you said, if we're going to put shoes on people, let's do it. We're going to put food in mouths, let's do it. We're going to put shelter, let's do it. We're going to put new book bags, let's do it. And let's do it with a smile on our face and not worrying about how much money it's going to cost. Okay, Lisa, here I go. So, for the past 79 years, we've seen what happens when we tap into the caring spirit of volunteers, companies, nonprofit partners, and people like you. We've all become stronger, happier, and healthier. United. We've solved difficult problems and helped one another through everything from recession and pandemic to just simple everyday struggles. The United Way of Worcester, Tennessee, Virginia uses a community-wide perspective to identify which of the community's needs are going unseen and unmet. And then we partner with corporate, government, nonprofit organizations, and others to tackle them. When a donor makes a gift, they are investing in more than 13 United Way of Bristol direct service programs and 24 local partner agencies. They are joining alongside thousands of community members to create a circle of hope and support around our community and those that have left serve. So I appreciate your help and support in whatever community that you're doing this for. And just to let you know, we are shooting in Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee for $1 million. So isn't that great? And we know that the our goal will help people like the little girl I was just a few years ago. Thank you. Thank you all so much for having us today. My name is Wendy P. I'm the Executive Director of the United Way of Green County. So unlike all the other folks who have been up here, I am actually staff. So my board chair, Mark Profit, who is retired from Metro Corporation, could not be with us today. Perhaps Monica. It is because when I invited him before, he had to speak. So <laughs> he said, you go. <laughs> so in Green County, we're about to get kicked off again. We have a, a great community doing amazing things so lucky that I get to see that and that I get to be a part of it. So we will raise about $350,000 this year for our programs in Greene County and thank you all for including us in this event. Thank you so much. As we gather together today to launch this year's regional United Way campaigns, let us take a moment to reflect on the power of inclusion and the profound effect, impact, we can achieve when we embrace our collective diversity and unite for a common cause. I am here, you are here, we are here because we believe in the transformative power of coming together to support those in need and to create a brighter future for everyone. In a world filled with challenges, our strength lies in the unity, in, a, in our unity, enabling us to overcome obstacles and build communities where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. Today, we commit to lifting each other up, ensuring that every voice is heard, and fostering environments where all individuals, regardless of background or circumstances, can flourish. As we embark on this important journey, may our efforts be guided by an unwavering commitment to inclusion, integrity, and collaboration. May we find the strength to persevere through any obstacles, 
and the courage to champion the diverse needs of those we serve, and the empathy to connect with each other in meaningful and impactful ways. Let us remember that every action we take, no matter how small, has the power to create lasting change, fostering a future where our communities are not just surviving, but thriving. We are deeply grateful for all of you who have joined us in this mission. May our efforts today and every day be rooted in compassion, empathy, and a genuine desire to make a difference and to contribute to building a stronger, more caring, more thriving community. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to read to you a scenario that so many families in our region deal with every single day. While I'm reading through this scenario, Paula, you're going to be handed items that represent each situation, okay? I want you to hold on to every single one of them as best as you can, okay? We're going to start. First situation, you are a single mom with two kids ages seven and 10. You had to leave a domestic violence situation. You couldn't take anything with you except for one bag with some clothes. After leaving the emergency shelter, you are able to stay with a family member, but it's only temporary, and you're looking for your own place to rent. Now you still have your job as a cashier, but you really need to create a new budget to adjust for having just one income. And you're looking for a second job because the cost of food, the cost of gas, has increased. And sometimes your schedule just does not allow you to be home when the kids get home from school. And they're struggling with their homework because they're in a new home, they don't have the help they need after school to stay focused, and your second grader has fallen behind in reading. You have to apply for SNAP benefits, a reduced lunch program for kids, as well as health insurance with the state. All of this is confusing, okay? And you're not sure where to start. So the stress of all of this start to weigh on you a little bit, okay? There's a lot going on, and you'd like someone to talk to. Now, I'd like you to try to stand up. It's difficult, isn't it? Very difficult. It's hard to juggle everything on your own. Maybe you saw a mom, maybe you saw a sister, even a neighbor in this scenario, but did you know more than 50% of families in our communities are in similar circumstances to the situation that we just showed you. They're in what we call Alice population, assisted, limited, income constrained, employed. They are one emergency away from falling into poverty. We're talking a job loss, an emergency room visit, even something like a flat tire can be devastating. So how can we help? You contact the United Way, and they're able to connect you with resources that can help. So, let's do this in reverse. Because of the United Way, your kids are able to attend an after-school program on a sliding pay schedule. They receive help with their homework, after school, as well as a healthy snack. And by the time you get off work, the kids have their homework done. You can relax with them and ask how their day has been. More than 2,000 children right here in our area are served by after-school centers that are supported by United Way donations. You are also able to secure food boxes from Second Harvest Food Bank to offset the cost of food. More than 35,000 people received food from food pantries supported by United Way donations.
and you use the 211 Benefits Kitchen Program through United Way to easily see what benefits you qualify for, and you're able to relieve some of those burdens through affordable health insurance and SNAP benefits. Uh, across the state of Tennessee, the Benefits Kitchen Program gave access to four and a half million dollars in state benefits to residents in Tennessee in 2023. Also, Frontier Health has an online counseling program that enables you to talk things through with a professional and work through some of that stress. Calling 988, that is a hotline for anyone seeking mental health help. More than 8,000 people from our area received mental health care through services supported by United Way Investments. So you go to the Salvation Army to get on lists for housing. Last year, more than 4,000 families and individuals were assisted in securing stable housing through programs like Appalachian Service Project, the Army, fam, fam, or Salvation Army rather, Family Promise, and the American Red Cross, all supported by United Way Investments. Appalachian Opportunity Fund connects you then with a financial coach. Through one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, you plan a budget that works for your new situation. You're also to pay off predatory lenders and secure a car loan with a trusted financial institution. Safe House, an emergency domestic violence shelter, is able to provide you and the kids with a care package that includes clothes. It includes hygiene items, since you had to leave everything behind. More than 500 people, including 100 children and 400 adults, receive services from our domestic violence shelters supported by United Ways. Now, try to stand up. <laughs> 